Well, I realized today that the uh, Doyle sale is going to take place in less than a week, so I thought I would ought to get the uh, video done on that and show you what's in it and talk about it a little bit. It's a pretty good-looking sale. Uh, there's, there's a wider range of things. There's some good Japanese objects. There is a, a, a fair bit of jade at the beginning, some very nice silk textiles, some paintings, and uh, all of them are, are sort of in the uh, sweet spot for many collectors, uh, things that are under uh, the bulk, the vast majority of the sale are items that are under 25,000. Uh, there's some very expensive things as well, but uh, I thought it'd be fun to go through it, and uh, we'll, we'll just get right to it. Alrighty, uh, let's see. Uh, on starting the sale will be a, a slew of uh, pretty good stuff bottles. Uh, all of them are, uh, there's a, there's a, the first lot is a good agate carved bottle. And then after that, you have pairs of stuff bottles uh, in porcelain, hard stones, you name it. And there's some decent lots in here as well. Uh, lot number nine, for example, looks pretty good. Uh, there's about, what is there? There's uh, about, about a dozen bottles in there. And uh, there's another lot down here with about, a, about eight or ten lot, uh, pieces in it and on and on and on and then there's some nice looking little jades and these are reasonably priced uh, the most of them will probably be late look like they're uh, likely late ching um uh, maybe some republic examples there's a couple of older ones in here and uh, it goes on and on for the first page so the, you you if you're a jade buyer you want to check some of them out use your use your uh, use what you know and uh see how you do some of the lots I like in particular, uh, one of them the, is sort of up uh, early in the sale is this nice looking table. It's an export table. Uh, it's about 44 or so, 41 inches in diameter, but it's beautifully carved. Um, if you're looking for a great table with a marble top and spectacular quality carving all around the base, this thing is just beautifully done. Uh, there's no, there's, there's, I don't see any uh, damage to it anywhere. Um, uh, the, this wonderful bat carved into it. Good hardwood table. I'm not sure what kind of wood it is. I don't know if they say. Um, let's see, hardwood center table. It's some variety of rosewood, no doubt. 43 and a half inches in diameter. Six to eight thousand dollar estimate. But I, I think it's worth it. I think the, these tables are uh, amazingly well made. A lot of work in them. A lot of good carving into them all the way up and around uh if you live in the new york area especially uh you want to bid on this table if you're looking for a good table a great table really pretty really pretty table and uh then on the painting scenes there's this uh 19th century gouache it's 34 by 19 inches this is a pretty good size painting it's estimated at three to five thousand dollars which seems quite reasonable and it's a, a gathering under a pavilion there's a lot to look at here they have they're, they're, they're uh, men and women are all well oh these are all women they're all women i thought the one in the middle was a gentleman look i think it's an elderly woman beautifully robed though uh this is uh, some sort of gathering of high-ranking officials or something or, or prominent figures at least and uh, there's some nice uh, rocky guns. It almost looks it looks a little bit like the Summer Palace, but I don't think it is. But it's a, a, a beautiful area. Uh, nice gardens. Uh, the water the water makes me think this might be uh, uh, a sort of a dream image of the Summer Palace. I'm not sure, but uh, three to five thousand uh, uh, dollars, early to mid 19th century, probably Jiaqing or Daoguan period. Uh, nice, nice looking uh, picture. Um, and big, big, almost three feet long. And then in the silks, you've got this. Uh, there's, a, there's a number of good silks. This one I like a lot because I like the color. I love this red color, this salmon-y red color. But look at the detail. Um, when, you, when you blow the pictures up, um, you see a lot of really, really, really fine stitching. And that's what you're paying for with good silks. You're paying for the stitching. And it's got these beautiful large hoof sleeves. Apparently, this is a winter robe. It's got a liner in it. Uh, but very fine quality. The needlework on the end, it's interesting, almost looks like uh, like a like a European like a European needlework. The colors, um, it's not. It's Chinese, obviously, but uh, it's a very reminiscent of, uh, of of some of the things you see on on on, on old French tapestries. That 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 feeling, these colors. 
uh, but beautiful uh, uh, workmanship all the way down. Nice, nice skirt across the bottom. Looks like it's in good shape. A little bit of uh, uh, maybe a slight bit of fading by around the back of the collar, which you want to see because that generally means it's it's you know it's it's been used. And here you have some old old interior staining and whatnot down around the bottom. That's all very normal. You, you if you don't see that, you you better ask yourself. Um, is this thing older? Is it a, a very high-end new copy? Because they do make high-end new copies. You want to be careful out there on robes. Uh, but this is a good one. This is a good one. It's got a damask liner, um, and it's insulated, of course, if it's a winter robe. So it'll be. It'll have some weight to it. It'll be nice and heavy. Uh, and then this. Um, um, uh, uh, for some reason, they, they've got this one photographed backwards. I think they made a mistake. Um, so um, um, if the folks at Doyle see this video, you might want to turn the turn the turn the figure around in your pictures. Just a little error here. It looks like it looks like the front shot, but it's really not. That's the back of the bronze. Um, and it would be nice to have a good headshot of it straight on. But this looks like a pretty nice lacquered uh, Ming Dynasty bronze, and it's a uh, it's decent size. But it's ten inches tall, with just a fifteen hundred to two thousand dollar estimate. That seems very viable if it's that's if that's where it goes. Uh, I think it'll do much better than that. I think it'll probably bring three to five thousand. But uh, who knows? Um, you, you know, in, in in this world, you don't know. Go in and leave bids. This is the kind of thing you want to leave bids on. All right, you just go through and leave leave fifteen hundred two thousand on it. Maybe you get it. And if you do, you got a bargain. All right, and then this, this is my favorite bronze in the sale. I think this is absolutely wonderful. It is very big. It is twenty six inches in height. It's estimated at eight to twelve thousand um, dollar gilt bronze uh, uh, um, uh, uh, lacquer lacquer you know lacquer treatment over the bronze. But the head is beautifully cast. The head on this is one of the nicest castings of a head that I've, I've ever seen on a, um, on a, on a Ming bronze. Um, it's, a, it's a female attendant. The details on the robe are sumptuous, uh, very nice condition all the way around. And I think the estimate is, 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 is probably quite low for what it is. I think, the, I think it'll, it'll get well beyond that. I suspect this will bring, this looks like the kind of bronze that'll bring 20 or $30,000. But uh, a very fine quality. But the head on the figure is just wonderful. It really, really is. What's the back of it look like? Let's take a look. Uh, okay, there you go. Yeah, this is a really high quality casting. Look at the hair. Look at the hair. Every, every it looks like every strand is, is is delineated, and then they have it knotted off to the sides the way they do. Um, a really fantastic example, I think. Really, really fantastic. I like that. That's nice. Yeah. And um, this, if, if you're into, um, it's interesting, we had an inquiry today, we had an inquiry for not this, but another piece of marbled um, pottery. Marbled pottery was something that was started in the Tang Dynasty, and then toward the end of the Song, it sort of came back again into the Jin, and uh, then during the Ming Dynasty, of course, they did it as well. And this is a, a molded barbed run plate. Um, has got a little bit of a raised short foot under it. Uh, nicely done, though. This is a nice-looking bowl. Uh, it looks like it's in good condition all the way around. It's around seven inches in diameter, um, estimated at three to five thousand dollars, which is which is well certainly within the range that they bring. Um, some of these examples can bring much much more even, um, and this one might do a little better too. It's, it's good looking plate, and then this uh, those of you like Zi Shaoware, uh, this is a good one. This is a nice looking bottle. It's eleven and a half inches tall. I like the figure. These are quickly drawn, you know, with a quick loose brush, really just sort of zipped in there. Um, and uh, it's got several bands of decoration um, starting at the top all the way down. One, two, three, four bands. And then you have the central figure here um, uh, with curled grasses around her and so forth within a cartouche. Uh, the bottom of it looks absolutely fine. Um, there you have it. Came from the Stephen, oh, Stephen Harvest. Uh, I know Stephen Harvest. There you go. It's something that Stephen owned. Uh, he was a collector for a long time in New York City. Uh, he bought nice things. He used to come to our auctions. At uh, any rate, um, uh, the very classic Zhao bottom right there. The pottery looks good. I don't see any breaks. And uh, the estimate on this, I think, is very reasonable. It's uh, just uh, $1,500 to $2,000 for a good Zhao pear-shaped vase. 
Uh, and this is the kind of thing they have at Doyle. They have interesting, good-looking things that you can, that the, the, you know, the, uh, uh, the, a lot of collectors can afford to shop here and get nice objects, well described. Um, uh, and this is, you know, these are just some of the things. And the prices aren't going to break the bank. Here you have a really nice Anand glazed, uh, of, of, they call it black glaze. It's actually a cocoa brown, uh, but they call it black. Uh, it's almost metallic metal flake looking glaze. But the potting on this is powerful. Strongly potted, thick walls, compressed form, rather elegant, nicely finished. Um, here's a picture of the bottom exactly what it should look like and he's dating it to um what is he dating it to yeah yohan de ming dynasty um I'd, I'd be more inclined to call this yohan but um that's just my personal uh opinion but the, the, there there's a lot of spillover between the periods as everybody knows so it's difficult to be absolute but uh, this is nice and the interior of it looks like it's in very good condition don't see any uh, you know really detrimental scratches or damage to it little tiny 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 bits of wear and that's all i see uh this is a this is a handsome little bowl it's just a, a good a good object it's five inches in diameter eight to twelve hundred dollar estimate um, and then this, the Mei Ping vase. I like this also. I, lo I love this kind of thing. Uh, it's a, uh, a Ming Dynasty or older, they think, uh, Mei Ping with this beautiful uh, uh, warm brown glaze on it. It's beautifully potted. This is the thing that this pot has going for it. The proportion and scale, this, the way it's shaped all the way around um, is just excellent. This is really superbly potted with this stepped base under it. Um, here's the underside of it, nice, uh, nicely finished, very neat and tidy. Um, uh, the, the, the foot rim was left unglazed, and then they, they coated it with that black dressing uh, that you see sometimes on uh, pieces. And they, 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 this dressing they used right through. They, they, you, see, you find it on uh, Chunlung pieces. You find this, this very similar black glass dressing even on Guangxu um, Hu form bases. Uh, and there it is on here. And uh, I agree, this is probably, um, I think this is probably Ming, um, but uh, it's awfully good looking, awfully nice shape. And uh, eight inches tall, eight to $1,200 estimate. All right, and that's, I don't think that's a crazy number. And this is a real legit um, uh, transitional vase. We've had a bunch of inquiries on this vase since this went up. Uh, I've, I've had six inquiries through the uh, identification program on the site. Uh, people have submitted it. Uh, I think this is a lo I love the way the Fu line is done on this. Uh, these characters at the top are known to have been used on transitional wares. And the, 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 you notice the foot, the glaze stops about a half an inch, a third of an inch above the base. And that's pretty typical for these. Unfortunately, the, the copyists are learning how to do it. So you want to be very, very careful. This is not a copy. This is a legit one. Um, and I, I think the estimate is, is, is a bit on the low side or a, a maybe excessively reasonable. It's only estimated at two to $3,000. It is 10 inches tall. It should bring a bit more than that. But if it doesn't, it's a steal. It's a great buy. If you can buy this for 3000 or under, it's a great buy. Here's the foot rim on it. You can, you can see the little uh, turnings and so forth where they cleaned up the base. Very typical on these. You do see them. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't see the turnings and other times you do. But uh, you see a nice, nice little smattering of tiny impurities in the clay. Those little black dots and rust spots appearing. That's what you want to see. Those are the kind of things that you want to see um, when identifying them. And then you have this, this very nice uh, uh, broadleaf uh, uh, trees drawn in here, the big uh, tropical trees with the cur with the U-shaped check like check mark the grasses at the bottom. This was a technique that they did when they when they drew grasses. And for a long time, when the copyists were making fakes of transitional ways, they didn't get that right, and they sometimes just drew them as straight lines as grass. Now they're starting to do them in the check like the check marks. So you 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 really want to be careful if you're if you're looking. But this one is absolutely fine, and I think the estimate is 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 very very reasonable um I, I would you know i kind of would expect this to bring five to seven thousand so we'll see and then this this is very pretty i just this just caught my eye it's a kang shi dish but the colors are nice on it uh nice and vibrant um the decoration looks to be very very good all the way around um nowhere any place uh, the center uh, decoration is all intact. You don't see knife cuts or anything in it, like somebody's been, you know, feeding off of it for the last 200 years. Um, the back of it looks absolutely fine. Um, here's the uh, foot rim around the back. 
uh, really attractive little dish. Really, really attractive. Estimated at uh, seven to nine hundred dollars, but I bet the reserve is is around three hundred. So, if if you throw a bid on it of four or five hundred dollars, you have a good chance, they suspect, of maybe getting it. All right, and then these are, I think, to potentially, if they go for their estimate, they're okay. So, like I was saying, if these go for their within their estimates, these are absolute steal. These are a pair of Kangxi, twelve inch tall. Um, uh, uh, square bases with their cupboards, no less. These are very, very nice looking. Really, really nice looking. I think the finial has been replaced on it or something, but um, the decorations down the side are really good. Uh, all the way around, the quality of the cobalt is excellent. And uh, the, the bottoms look good here um, and so forth. Uh, if you're a Kang Shi buyer and you like big square bottles, big square jars, um, the, these are really nice. They should, the lot, it, it, I mean, it, it, they should bring, they should bring 3,000 each, I think is probably a more realistic uh, number to expect. But the two to $3,000 estimate tells you that they're probably viable um, uh, because the, the, the reserve is going to be under $2,000, obviously. Uh, and and uh, that, that, that would be a, an absolutely breathtaking bargain for somebody to buy them for that price. And there are the lids, very sturdily built, uh, nicely done flat bottoms and so forth. So do uh, uh, check those out if you're a blue and white buyer. Uh, really, really nice. And uh, then on to this. This is one of my favorite lots in the sale. This beautiful yellow Kung Shi vase. And check out the finial on top. Nice jade finial on top with this beautifully carved cracked ice pattern with a plum blossom lid. Uh, the lid the lid is later, the lid is probably late Qing, but um, the, the vase itself is nicely potted, beautifully shaped, and it's a big one, 14 inches tall. This is a big jar. And the estimate, look, check out the estimate, three to $5,000 for this egg yolk yellow Kang Shi jar. Here's a picture of the bottom of it, looks fine. Uh, beautifully evenly glazed all the way around. I don't see any damage to it. There's the underside of the lid. Uh, yep, that's a late 19th century Qing lid. But it's got a piece of jade on it that's probably worth $1,000 at least. So yeah, if you spend three to five on the, on the piece, you gotta, you're basically getting $1,000 jade thrown in with it. But, but it looks good on this. It goes well with the, uh, with the jar. It's a nice assembly. All right, and then you have this, a pair of uh, Kangxi baluster jars, uh, really well done. Uh, you know, they are a, a, a nearly a mirror a matched pair, uh, but, but not quite. They're slightly different, as you can see. Uh, they're sort of a complementary matched pair, I guess you'd call it. Uh, here are some figures and gentlemen on a, on a, carrying a parasol uh, and a procession. And it's repeated over here, but you notice the willow, the willow trees coming down, um, uh, and so forth. Actually, it looks like the willow trees are coming. The willow trees are growing out of the clouds. Um, are a little bit different, close though, but a little bit different. And uh, there's the bottom of them, um, just the way they should look. Uh, those nice foot rims. The foot rims on these look filthy. Um, uh, th that's what a foot rim looks like after it's been in the stand for a long time. Um, but you still see that nice white air, those nice white areas coming up in the corners uh, with that very, very fine Kangxi clay. And uh, that's something you uh, want to look for always. Uh, these are estimated at ten dollars to $15,000, but they're 17 inches tall each. Um, and if they haven't been restored, um, one of these is probably worth 10000 So uh, expect the pair to, if you're interested in things like this, you know, be prepared to go up to twenty or 30000 for them just in case. And sort of the, the same deal on this here, on this pair, um, a pair of 15 and a half inch vases. Um, very, very nice as well with Phoenix and, and birds and so forth all over it. Uh, nice looking, a uh, couple of lid, a couple of good with their lids. Here's the underside of them um, with this sort of a bluish tinge, but uh, they do appear to be Kang Shi. It looks like these were inked over at some point for some reason. Oh, they were cracked, the cracked bottoms, okay. Um, that's why. So the estimate on these is a bit lower, seven to nine thousand, and I think that estimate is about right, given given the uh, the damage to the bases. Um, I sort of expect that they'll they'll bring three or four thousand a piece, uh, because because of the damage up up on this one in particular. That's a significant crack, and it's been glued, uh, but very decorative. And you know, if they were perfect, they'd be twenty thousand also probably. So they're not a bad deal. 
And then on to this. This is one of the one of the, sort of the featured lots. It's a Kangxi uh, mallet vase. Um, very nicely done. It's got the it's got the the Lingbai cluster on the bottom. The fungi. There's the foot rim on it. Uh, very beautifully decorated though. This is the nice quality. The quality of the decoration on this with the scrolling clouds and the root heads is beautiful. And this is a, a fairly well known type. And in the past, they've had them in New, in, in New York and other places. Uh, Sotheby's and Christie's, of course, have had these. Bonhams has had them. And they do quite well. The estimate is ten to 15000 uh, I think the last time there was one of these in the market, I think it brought around 25000 So, um, you, know, you know, give this a shot. It's nine inches tall and uh, beautifully done. Beautifully done. Um, uh, so it's a pretty good sale for Kang Chi buyers. What I'm seeing, and if you're an export buyer, you do want to look at these. Uh, these are big, 21 inches tall, uh, 18th century, circa 1785 um, uh, jars, but with an aquatic scene, dock scene, horses. Look at that, a horse. Love the horses, and uh, you have these buildings. But notice the gilding; everything is in beautiful condition. That's the big thing with these: is a tiny bit of gilt loss around the rims, which is completely normal. Um, there's one with a foo lion on top, a foo lion on top of that one. So what do the masks look like? I want to see the masks. There they are. Oh, look at those are cool. Electric blue. Uh, the, 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 the lion's masks are excellent on this. Uh, with, uh, done in that red with the blue on the top of the head and this very fine diaper pattern running down the side. Uh, they, 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 on the lower quality ones, the diapers, those y -shaped, upside down Y shaped devices, won't be quite so finely done and are so well gilded. These are beautifully, beautifully done, tight and small, nicely gilded. And the gilding on this, these two look remarkable. And 21 inches tall. These are monsters. These are really, really big. Um, it seems to me there was a single one in this form that turned up on eBay um, two years ago, maybe, or something like that. But it was very, it was very similar, but smaller. Uh, about 16 inches as and I recall that that one vase um, ended up going for about uh, seven thousand dollars and here you have two of them with an eight to twelve thousand dollar estimate which I think is perfectly fine um, let's see how they look underneath uh, they look fine no cracks no hairlines no repairs uh, get a condition report uh, that's why we're doing this video now so we have everybody's time to get condition reports and get registered if they want to bid in the sale these are very very handsome Really, really handsome. I like it. I like them almost as much as I like that big yellow vase with the jade finial. And then on to this. This is one of the. This is the lead lot in the sale. Actually, it's a Chanchu Ping Chinlung Markin period, uh, Famille Rose decorated vase. Very, very pretty. There are copies of these floating around. Okay, just to keep it, keep that in mind. Um, this I don't believe is a copy. I actually talked to Rick about it, and he was quite pleased with it, and he had sort of a humorous story about getting it. Uh, <laughs> any rate uh, but how, how you get things for auctions is always humorous uh, and uh, he seems quite happy about this so we'll see how that does it's just it's got a big estimate it's estimated at 100 to 150 thousand could go for more um, uh, because this is that's sort of the, the the moderate end it's the it's, it's a very encouraging number to get people to bid so uh, do check that out and it's good size it's a pretty big face 20 inches tall which as you know those of you who follow these these this form um, they often are. They're 18 to 24 inches quite often. This is a good one. It's right in the middle as far as size goes. Um, and the colors are excellent. The colors are really, really pretty. So we'll see how that does. I like that. And then on to this. This is a quirky thing. And I'm adding this just because it's not something you see very often. It's a late Qing, late 19th century basin with um, um, uh, 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 like floating flowers all over it. Just floating flowers. And then it uh, looks like they have some bats around the rim up here. Or red flowers. They're red flowers. Oh, no, there's a bat. That looks like a bat. Uh, but this is it's a big basin. And it's uh, it's 15 inches in diameter. Be a great thing to have. Unglazed base. Here it is. Uh, looks absolutely fine to me. Very nicely finished. It's got the same foot rim as you see on uh, uh, Rose Mandarin vases of the same period. Uh, this sort of rounded, dark brown foot. But very attractive. Uh, let's see, uh, 15 inches, 1000 to $1,500 estimate. Very reasonable. 
I think this is fine, uh, but this is an unusual thing. Um, if you like unusual porcelains, something you know great to put in the middle of a dining table or in a hall table and fill it with flowers in the spring, this would be a great thing to have kicking around your house. Um, there's the inside of it, strong, thick walls. It's, it'll hold water, obviously, so you, could, you can really use it. Um, I like that. That's, that's, a, that's a nice thing. That's a nice accessory. Uh, it's got good colors. It needs a cleaning, though. You see the old, there's some old sticker gunk still on it. They didn't give it a bath. Uh, this thing would clean up beautifully, though. I think it would clean up and really, really glow. All right. And then if you're a Japanese buyer um, and you like Harado, uh, this is a very fine Harado uh, 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 vase with the, with the applied cranes on the neck. Nicely done all the way around and that very fine Harado cobalt work. You can see it on the, on the bark of the trees, that really, really fine detailed work. That's something that the Chinese rarely got right um, doing this kind of a cobalt work. Um, the, the Japanese Harado decorators excelled at it. And uh, of course, they started out uh, making porcelain for the imperial family. So the, the standards were always very, very, very high in Harado. Um, uh, this is, you know, the, the, the leaves, the serrated leaves, very precise, very tidily drawn and so forth. Uh, really nice is the inside of it. There's the base. Um, I don't know if any of you, uh, how many of you collect, have collected Harado ware, but um, is, uh, Harado is some of the most interesting um, porcelain that was ever produced in Asia. Um, just absolutely fascinating stuff. And this is uh, just sumptuously beautiful um, for, for a smaller piece. It's only eight inches tall. It looks like it's big. Uh, it has a thousand to fifteen hundred dollar estimate, and uh, it doesn't look to have been restored in any way. So it, it's a pretty good buy. I love the pine trees with these with these beautifully beautifully done uh, pine needles all around it, up and then up under the top. Handsome. And uh, lastly, is this is this Japanese Buddha. Uh, Edo period, uh, probably eight, mid 18th century or so, maybe a little before. Um, Bodhisattva, it is 26 inches tall with a, just a $1,500 to $2,000 estimate. It's, it's a lacquered wood, obviously, uh, gilded hands. But the, the quality is wonderful, and the facial, uh, the face on the figure is excellent. Very calm, very quiet, uh, 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 very sort of uh, contemplative. And he's carrying a bottle of wisdom and down over the folded robes. But the carving of the robes, I noticed on this, was really, really good. That's all carving. That's not, uh, you know, cast or something. Um, that was done in, done out of a, uh, the, the, the wood base before they lacquered it. And uh, the facial, as I said, the facial expressions are really, really good. Here's a side shot of it. Nice lotus base all the way up. Beautiful. And there's a second figure sitting on top of his head. And um, and there's a, another shot of the top. Okay, and this is a good thing if you're a Japanese buyer and you, you'd like one of these. This is a big one, 26 inches. So it's uh, it's something that would, would present itself well in a room. And um, uh, does, I don't see also. I was also looking to see if I see any cracks running down the body. Often these fit ver vertical statues over time will develop cracks that will push through. So the thing will be sort of half split in places. And I don't see any splits on this. You want to check and ask. Always ask about figures if they have any splits. But this one looks pretty good. Looks real good. So uh, that's that's just a quick overview of the sale. It's a nice auction. Um, and if, you, if you're going to be paying attention to the others, don't miss out on things over here too. Uh, they, they run good auctions. They have a good department. And you have plenty of time now to, to uh, uh, send in inquiries for extra photographs, information, condition reports, whatever you need. Get registered. Um, I think you can bid on their site or you can bid on, um, I think you can bid on Invaluable Live Auctioneers and all that. But uh, um, uh, check it out. Check it out. Uh, the sales are coming up quickly. And um, uh, we're, we're looking at, we may do a, one other video before this, the sale. Then we'll be back with the uh, post-auction results uh, once, the, once the dust settles. We'll see how everything did. Uh, I'm, real, I'm really anxious to see how things do this, this week because it's everything that's been going on in the, in the, in the economy. Um, how, how will the art market hold up? And we're heading into the winter season with a lot of auctions, not just in Asian art and so forth, but in you know, fine art, modern art, jewelry, 
um, uh, furniture and so forth. Uh, you got the the big the big sale coming up. We're going to do a video on the Rockefeller. I mean, on the, not the Rockefeller Center, another rich family, the Getty family. Um, they are having uh, the, the Gordon and Ann Getty sale, and it is a beast of a sale. It may be the, the may it may end up grossing the largest amount of any single owner collection in history. I'm not sure yet, but boy, there's some amazing looking stuff and that's going to be happening in uh, starting in October. They're running a series of auctions, some online, some live. Um, they've done a great job with the photography. Sale looks amazing. We'll, we'll be talking about that too. Okay, have a great weekend. I'll be back tomorrow with the regular weekly video and uh, thanks for watching. But uh, get a hold of the folks at Doyle's and uh, um, let, let them know of any interest you have in their things and uh, get, get the ball rolling. All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.